Hey, everybody. As you probably know, every image that you see from an amateur astrophotographer like myself has been run through a series of programs that stack multiple images together and then bring out some of the finer details. And what ends up happening is that stacked final image looks a lot better than what would you, you would see with the naked eye. So what I'm going to show you here is a sampling of every planet in the solar system plus the sun and moon through my six inch reflector telescope. Now that six inch telescope is called the Celestron uh, Nexstar 6SE. And it costs about a thousand dollars and it's probably the smallest aperture size, six inch, uh, that you would want if you are trying to get serious about planetary astrophotography or, or planetary viewing. So let's get started. Uh, going in no particular order, let's just start with the moon because uh, it's an easy subject to start out with, uh, even if you're pulling a telescope out for the first time. And so keep in mind that air turbulence changes from day to day. All of these views are considered average to maybe above average viewing or what we call seeing in the world of astronomy. Uh, the moon is actually a pretty cool target because of the different phases and how the shadows change from day to day. And so one picture here doesn't really do it justice, but uh, you know, I'm just trying to show you the difference between a live view and the processed image. Let's look at Saturn next, and this is the live view through the telescope. And I kind of think that if I can see the gap between the rings and the planet in this live view, I feel like I'm doing pretty well. And you can see that here. Uh, what's pretty cool in this shot, and a testament some pretty good, to some pretty good seeing, is that you can actually see the Cassini division, uh, which is the largest gap there between the inner and outer rings. And then here is Saturn in the middle of the day. You can actually see planets in the middle of the day is one thing that uh, I learned when I got into astrophotography. Uh, Saturn's somewhat difficult to find because it is pretty faint, uh, but you can definitely at least make out the rings in this uh, live view. And the process view is better, but uh, still takes a lot of processing to kind of tease out those details. Next, I'll show Venus. Uh, Venus is kind of unique in that it goes through phases like our moon. Uh, it's a tough target though, because it's generally uh, really low in the sky, uh, unless you wanna to try to do it during the daytime. And low in the sky means you're viewing through more atmosphere, which means more turbulence and blurrier images. Uh, this one came out pretty good, but there's uh, just not much to Venus. Uh, so the phases are about all that uh, makes it interesting uh, through a telescope of this size. Okay, let's do Mercury next and get this one out of the way. I didn't really set out to get a picture of Mercury on this day. I was just doing something else uh, with the telescope and I saw it pop up over the horizon. Mercury is really tiny. It's like 40% larger than our moon. Uh, and this live view is a great example of atmospheric dispersion where the atmosphere acts like a prism at low elevations. So one side is red and the other side is blue. And Mercury was only 10 degrees above the horizon uh, when I took these pictures. So it's really way too low for astrophotography or serious astrophotography. But uh, uh, to correct for that, you can get what's called an ADC, an atmospheric dispersion corrector, uh, that kind of corrects those uh, blue and red shifts. And the final image really isn't very interesting, but I think it is cool that you can at least see the phase here of Mercury again, just like uh, Venus. It does go through phases, but it's so small and so far away and so close to the, the sun that it's hard to see those phases. But you can actually see that the right side is dark and, and the left side here is light. So it's kind of a half Mercury. Let's go to my favorite target, Jupiter, next. This is a live view of what was a pretty good viewing night. Uh, you can see quite a few details in, even in this live view and you can see the great red spot in the lower right. Uh, on a poor seeing night, you might just see these two dark bands and no other details. So kind of lower your expectations uh, for Jupiter. Uh, I love this final image. You can see all kinds of swirls and storms in the clouds and the great red spot is uh, really obvious and pops out there. Jupiter is also an excellent daytime target. Uh, you can even see all of four, all four of Jupiter's largest moons in the daytime, but most of the time only once you process the image can you kind of tease those kind of details out. Uh, in this live view, the moon Ganymede is in the lower right. It's pretty dim, but you can see it. And then in the final image, I've rotated it so that Jupiter is kind of right side up. Uh, so you'll see Ganymede off to the left in this shot. And then uh, you can see 
the Great Red Spot in the lower right of the planet again. Uh, I kind of had to overprocess the image to be able to, to get the Great Red Spot to show up, uh, but still, it's a pretty cool image for the middle of the day. Let's go to Mars next. Uh, this again is an average seeing night where it's kind of jumping around quite a bit, but you can see some of the dark and light patches pretty clearly, even in this live view. Uh, and on the upper left, you can catch a glimpse of the northern ice cap uh, every once in a while. Uh, once it's processed though, you can really start to pull out better detail. Again, seeing wasn't great here, so there aren't a lot of sharp edges on these details, but again, a pretty good shot of Mars from a six inch telescope. I'm going to get to a pretty cool shot of the sun here in a second, but let me touch briefly on the planets uh, outside of Saturn's orbit, which are called the ice giants, uh, Uranus and Neptune. This first one is Uranus. It's actually a huge planet. It's like 63 times, uh, or 63 Earths could fit inside of it, uh, but it's so far from Earth. It's literally 1.6 billion miles away. When I took this picture, about 2.6 billion kilometers. Uh, so pretty far away. The processed image is surprisingly good considering what we started with here and uh, it's still too far away to try to pull out any details in the clouds uh, or the atmosphere um, uh, you know just considering the the small scope size again here now looking at uh, Neptune is comedic actually it's, it's something that you do just to kind of check off the list say you saw it uh, in fact, I hadn't even bothered to post process this image uh, before I started this video or this project. The process image is really just a blue dot and not a very clean blue dot at that. Uh, if you want something better than this, you're going to have to get a much bigger telescope or launch your own space probe. I'm going to wrap this up with a view of the sun, and this is the view through the telescope at some sunspots. Uh, the sun is actually pretty interesting to look at because the sunspots change from day to day and even during the day. Uh, and even with a smaller telescope like this, you can obviously see those spots, but you can also see a little bit of texture in certain situations. Uh, you're not going to see any solar prominences with a telescope like this. There are dedicated solar telescopes that you would need to bring out that kind of detail or those kind of features. Uh, pretty much just sunspots and uh, maybe some differences in brightness uh, with a telescope like this. The processed image though comes out, I think really cool, uh, pretty good detail on the sunspots. Thanks for watching this and definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. I do look at the comments. And if you have any requests uh, for what you'd like to see through the telescope, let me know and I might just make a video. I mean, this, this is how uh, this video came about. Uh, a lot of times it's easier to explain something for me, at least in a video, rather than trying to verbally explain it without the visual aids. So thanks again for watching and see you next time.